Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Homebrew Buffoonery, Old School Edition. Right, so tonight I'm in the mood for uh, a lazy brew day. So uh, what I've got is my pan here with none of the accoutrement, none of the spargy things, no valves, no pumps, no silicon hoses, no cam locks, none of that nonsense. Um, although there may be prospects for something coming up very, very soon. Um, I'm just going uh, simple Pilsner malt mash, a uh, couple of what's it's of East Kent Golden Ops because I got a big bag of them the other day and I want to use them. And then I'm going to use some more of that Kveik yeast, which took two days to get going, but it's probably gurgling away now. And I'm not going to put any extra heat in it. I'm just going to leave it for an hour or maybe an hour and 20 or something like that. I'll do a few refractometer readings, um, but you know, I'm just going to let it go because I really can't be bothered tonight. CBA, as we say over here in the UK. Um, so what I've done is I've put my stats in. I've got uh, 1.25 kilos of Pilsner malt. I've only got about 500 grams of that left, so I'll have to get on to uh, the old malt miller and get some more in. And then I'm going to use 10 grams of East Kent Goldings, of my new East Kent Goldings at 60 minutes in the boil and then 10 grams at 10 minutes in the boil to try and get a bit of aroma and a bit of flavour into it. Uh, and then like I say, I'm going to use you know, like a quarter of a, that packet of uh, Kuwait yeast that I've got. And I've popped all my numbers into Brewer's Friend. Um, I've almost got a pale Commonwealth beer, uh, a British Golden Ale, which is 12A in the BJCP guidelines. So um, my OG is going to be it says here 1052 because I'm going off 65% efficiency. Um, my final gravity is 1012, 5.145% alcohol, 39 IBUs, 3.4 SRM. So it's going to be a really pale beer. But one of the other things I'm going to try tonight, because I'm only using one malt, um, is this. Okay, so what I have here is I'll say it's my trusty uh, kitchen blender, but to be honest, I've had it three years and I might have used it twice. But um, what I'm doing, I'm getting about 65% efficiency, maybe a little bit less with my um, with my uh, beers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pulverise the grains a little bit more. I'm going to stick them in this bad boy. I've got me, uh, well, a blade attachment that looks really, really sharp. Please be careful if you're going to do this. Uh, I'm going to give it a whiz with that. But I've also got this funny sort of spinny thing that goes in the top and I could pour some down this tube here and it might sort of grate it a little bit especially if we whiz it up proper high speed so we're going to give it a go and give it give the pills the malt a bit of a bash because um, I've, I've, I've been saying recently on this homebrew forum in the UK that uh, from what I've read the brewing the bag doesn't really matter how fine the crush is on your grain so you know I might get half of it flour or something I don't know we'll see what happens um, so let's get on with it. <laughs> okay, so I'm only going to start with about this much in the bottom, I think, just to have a look, see what it, see what happens. There's a lot of flour already. Okay, so <coughs> lid. Oh, it smells good. Oh, and let's go. Okay, so I just gave that. Is there a pulse button? Oh, there's a pulse there. Look. Let's see what happens to it. Right, let's take some out of here, a bit of pulsing, and we'll take some out of the proper stuff, and we'll see what the difference is. Okay, so this one is the pulsed one, and this one is the standard. So there's quite a bit of difference there. So I'm going to go do a few batches and try and get it like this. And then I'm going to mash in. Okay, so gentle pulses. That's what I'm going to do. Right, working. That's right. And I reckon that's about enough I need for each little bit. Okay, what I will say is that it has 
dropped the volume, because it was up here when I first checked, it's dropped the volume by about a fifth. So um, it's a fifth more dense, I suppose. Uh, whether that'll have any effect in the mash, I don't know. But, uh, you know, now it's time to get her mashed in and uh, wrap her up in the old cat blanket, which I've just found, and uh, leave her for an hour, 66 degrees. Brilliant. What I will also say is that food processors are a brilliant platform for your camera because that's what you're resting on at the minute. Not too bad there. I was expecting some dough balls, to tell you the truth, but I'm not done too badly. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get it back to temperature and then wrap her up in the blanket and uh, leave her for an hour. I'm not even going to touch her. I'm not even going to put any more heat into her. Okay, so just whilst we're mashing away there, that is the blade that I used in the uh, mixer. And I think it's done a really good job, actually. It's sort of half the size of all the grains overall, I reckon. But please, please be careful with these. This one uh, is got a serrated edge. There's a very, very slight serrated edge on it. Um, and it's not too sharp. But if you get a straight edge on one of these, it is really, really sharp. And it will do all sorts of nonsense to your fingers and anything else that comes into contact with it. So please, please be very careful when you're milling with... The kitchen blender. Okay, so I'm here with Kat and uh, still there, about 20 minutes in, and uh, Kat's been fighting, but never mind. Um, and what I've got here is the BJCP guidelines 12A, uh, a British golden ale, and uh, generally overall impression a hot forward, average strength to moderately strong pale bitter. So this is 5.15 ish percent, hopefully. Um, drinkability and a refreshing quality are critical components of the style. Critical components, quenchability and refreshing quality. Now this is generally uh, quite a hot forward beer, which is why I'm putting the 10 grams in uh, towards the end of the boil. Um, and it's got quite high bitterness as well, which is what I'm getting from the 10 grams at 60 minutes in the boil. Um, so it's, like I say, it's basically um, a more hoppy kind of beer, a bit like a pale ale, I suppose. Uh, it's uh, medium low to low malt character, so again, showcasing the hops. And uh, it says, it does say something about the type of hops that to be used. And because I've got East Kent Golding, that's obviously a British hop, isn't it? Um, but you know, if you want to do an American version of this, you use American hops. Uh, it says, uh, colour wise, straw to golden in colour, well, I'm just using Pilsner malt, so it's going to be really pale, uh, which is good. Uh, light to medium body, again from the single Pilsner, from the single malt. Low to moderate carbonation on draft, although bottled commercial versions will be more highly carbonated. So we're always looking for a, a sort of moderate carbonation, really. I don't want to go bonkers on the carbonation. Uh, well hopped quenching beer with an emphasis on showcasing the hops like I said before and you've got to serve this one cold it says more than traditional bitters uh, originally positioned as a refreshing summer beer so today is February the 10th 11th 12th 13th or 14th one of those 12th is it I don't know I know a bit like Crocodile Dundee me I just look at the sun and tell time don't know what time of year it is um, but it's uh, starting to brighten up it's a bit more spring like so i've done four or five dark beers and now it's time to get back onto the old pale beers and they'll be ready for late spring early summer which will be awesome um it says here english hops um although early on the beers were brewed with english hops increasingly american citrus flavored hops are used golden ales are also called golden bitters or summer ales British Blonde Ales. Now there is a Blonde Ale around the corner from me that tastes of Jacob's Crackers and that's what I would love to go for. But I think it's a bit too hot forward this one and I'm not sure it'll do that. Uh, developed in England to take on strongly marketed lagers. Uh, difficult to identify the first. Uh, brewed in 1986. Which is no time at all, is it? Why, what was I doing in 1986? I'm still at school. Uh, characteristic ingredients. Low colour pale malts. Uh, there's a blank canvas for hop character. Could use sugar, no, I'm not really interested in that at the minute. English hops, frequently used, American varieties, 
can be um, used as well. And they need a clean fermenting yeast, which I'm hoping the cafe is going to be. Um, everything more or less is in style. Uh, what the tags? Standard strength, pale colour, top fermented, British Isles, craft style, pale ale, family, bitter, hoppy. Okay, so we're at 60 minutes now. There it is, boiling away happily. And there's my sock. I've lost my little bit of um, wire, so I've got a couple of clothes pegs on him. Uh, 60 minutes, 10 grams of East Kent Goldings. And give her a dunk. Drop her in. See you in 45 minutes because I'm going to add some willow flock and then <coughs> another five minutes after that we'll add the last 10 grams of hops in and flame out, cooler down to 40 degrees, whirlpool, kvaker, stick her under the stairs. Okay so we're at 10.50, I could have gone to 10.51 like it said on my brewer's friend, 10.52, um, maybe another five minutes of boiling or something like that but I've got over, well over five litres of work left so even though I started with um, a low pre-boil gravity, almost 10 points lower, I'm gaining nearly sort of 12 points every half hour on my boil with this little pot. So she's at 40 degrees now and um, what I've done is I've whirlpooled her. She's still spinning. Yes, she is. She's still spinning. And uh, I'm going to leave her for half an hour and uh, put some more power in my phone and go and have myself a shower, freshen up and then we'll get her pitched and uh, under the stairs and see you later. Okay, so as you can see, I've freshened up now and that's been sitting for a good half hour. And what I have is my demijohn, my funnel, a noisy cat, and my mechanical filtration, uh, just in case any of the rubbish at the bottom gets in into there. And it worked quite well last time. Uh, so all I need to do is transfer it. I'll have to be careful watching because I've got more than enough, so I'll just pop up there. And a, a midges a quake and under the stairs a British Golden Ale 12A brilliant let's get going shut up so as you can see done quite well there don't you think and I've still got some left over now which I'm going to be in anyway there's my quake and I'm just going to use end of a teaspoon's worth about, shut up cat, about that much maybe, maybe a bit less actually, I'm not sure I need that much. Uh, and look out for a Kvake themed video coming up very soon, I'm going to go through uh, what happens with it once it's been used, because apparently you can reuse it, just dry it and reuse it over and over and over again. And oh, smells of vinegar, oh well, here it goes. And now all we need to do then is give her a shake, pop her under stairs in that there brewery, and uh, we'll have a good four and a half litres, well a good four litres at least, of uh, some nice British golden ale hopefully. That'll clear up as well a little bit I suspect as it cools down. Uh, but you know, that's it for now. Uh, keep an eye out for other videos that are coming up, tasting videos and uh, more brew day videos. And you know, as usual, you can like and you can subscribe and you can leave a comment if you want. And uh, why don't you go out and brew yourself something golden? Okay, so just as a little epilogue, which is basically a fancy word for something at the end after it's finished, because I've forgotten what I was going to say before and uh, I'll say it now. Uh, two things. Um, the first thing is doing it the simple way, the old way, um, worked just as well as if I did it with the spar jam and the pumps and the tubes and all that sort of stuff. I think I may continue going with the grinding in the in the blender with the grain because I liked how that did actually. I liked how it looked. Uh, that's pretty good that. Um, but the uh, spar jam pump thing, that's going to get a bit of a uh, an upgrade coming soon. Um, and then the other thing is that uh, without the pumps and without the spargy arms and without the tubes and without all the extra cleaning and all the nonsense and a bit of time saved on cooling down because using fake yeast and we can picture you know temperature at sun um, I've knocked about an hour off my brew day all told I did a full length mash did a full length boil 
you know, I've still took an hour off, which uh, shows you how effective and how good it can be to just do a simple brew in a bag infusion, keep her covered, boiler as normal and, you know, do your normal stuff. So lots of different ways to do brewing and uh, I enjoyed tonight. It's been good. Even though the cat has been a right whiner, shut up.